Okay, if you remember from last time, I introduced the three basic types of metamorphosis, ametabolus, hemimetabolus, or parametabolus, and holometabolus. Now we're gonna take some time and look at each one individually. Remember that a metabolus is characterized by no developmental change. So in this type of development, these insects are collectively known as the a metabola. The members are said to be a metabolus. All the insects will start out as eggs. So it starts out the exact same way, no matter what the developmental cycle. But during metamorphosis, there is really no substantial change or developmental change between the young and the adults. So basically, the young look exactly the same as the mature adults, except for the size. So they just look like super tiny adults. The young of the ametabola are known as nymphs. So you talk about the egg, the nymph, and the adult. <clears throat> the life cycle, an insect that develops in this manner. An example of an insect that looks like this is the silverfish. These are those little weird looking bugs that you see sometimes in your stored uh, boxes, in papers, in old books, that sort of thing. So up here, I've got a picture for you. This is what the young looks like. Look how tiny that is. Here's the fully formed adult. So it's just a tiny version of the adult. They don't have any major differences like wings or different body forms or anything like that. Now, the number of nymphal stages that a, uh, an ametabolous organism goes through depends on species. You can just go through one or two one nymphal stage, then adult, or you can go through many, many, many nymphal stages where you just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually you're the fully formed adult size. Okay, the next type of development is called parometabolis. Paro means slight. So in parometabolis development, there's only a slight change between each developmental stage. So in this case, we got the insects that lay down their eggs, they oviposit their eggs, the eggs hatch into the young nymphs. So again, we call the young of this type of development nymphs. The nymphs will develop a little bit and turn into older nymphs with slightly different body forms. They'll develop a little bit more, turn into maybe even older nymphs, slightly different developmental forms, develop some more, and then turn into the adult stage. So they pass through the egg, the nymph, the older nymph, maybe a large nymph, and then the adult stages. The number of nymphal stages, again, depends upon the species. So the thing that uh, makes this a slight change is something like a very minor change in body form. So with a metabolis, you saw nothing. It just, you were just getting bigger when you were going through this ametabolous development. In parametabolus, like with this life cycle here, you can see that the wing buds here get a little bit bigger, a little bit more fully formed. See how big they are there? So they're almost non-existent here in this small nymph. In this larger nymph, they're just starting. In this large nymph with developing wings, they're, they're obvious, and then they turn into the fully winged adult. So you get a slight change from stage to stage or in between these different uh, developmental stages and these nymphal stages. The big thing that characterizes parametabolous insects is that the nymph and the adult stages will all live in the same exact habitat. So different insects that exhibit this type of metamorphosis are things like cockroaches or true plant bugs or lice or termites. So this is a plant bug that we see in this uh, life cycle here. They feed on the same plants as the adults. The nymphs and the adults feed in the same place. They live in the same place. Everybody is in the exact same place doing the same thing. Parometabolism. The mantis has three life stages. Egg, nymph, and adult. This process is called incomplete metamorphosis because there is no pupil stage during development to an adult. The nymphs resemble the adult. After mating, female mantids, like this Chinese mantis, produce egg cases. An egg case can be about two to three centimeters in diameter. 
there can be up to 400 mantis eggs in a single egg case. The female mantis attaches the egg case to branches where it overwinters until spring arrives. The nymphs hatch from the eggs as the weather gets warmer. They exit the egg case through an opening. Many of the nymphs do not survive more than a few hours. Since a mantis's body continues to grow, but its exoskeleton does not, the insect must go through a molt, where it sheds its old exoskeleton. A soft new exoskeleton forms under the old one and hardens after the mantis finishes its molt. A mantis nymph can molt up to ten times. The mantis grows with each molt. After the last time the mantis molts its exoskeleton, it will have its full-grown wings like this Chinese mantis. Hemimetabolism or hemimetabolis is another kind of gradual metamorphosis where you just see a slight difference between the nymphal stages and the adult stage. So hemi literally means half. So in hemimetabolis development, the young look a lot like the adults with one or two major differences. In particular, the young of hemimetabolous insects do not have wings, while the adults do. Now, this may sound a lot like parametabolous development, right? In some ways, you're correct. The distinction between hemimetabolous and parametabolous is that the young in hemimetabolous do not live in the same environment as the adults. So parametabolous, they share an environment. Hemimetabolous, they live in significantly different environments. The young, in this case, are called naiads. This is because they live in an aquatic environment. So they live underwater. They have gills. They live significantly different from the adults. So the naiads, instead of the nymphs, the naiads have gills, live underwater in a significantly different environment from the adults. Now, this differentiation, this is something you won't necessarily see in every single entomological textbook or heard talked about by every single entomological professor. This differentiation is especially important to aquatic entomologists, those that really study those insects that live underwater, and they want to specify those insects from uh, other insects that also have this sort of gradual development, but they don't live underwater as the naiads. Uh, so you're going to read a few things where you see uh, all of these insects with gradual development all lumped under hemimetabolous metamorphosis, hemimetabolous development. That just means this person decided not to make that distinction. For the purposes of this class, we are going to make the distinction between those insects that live underwater as naiads and those that do not as nymphs. So those that do not have parametabolous metamorphosis, those that do have hemimetabolous metamorphosis. Now, some examples of hemimetabolous metamorphosis are uh, insects like the dragonfly or the damselfly, maybe stoneflies. All of those lay their eggs in water. The naiads will live underwater with gills. Then they turn into the adults. They lose those gills. They grow wings, and they turn into that adult terrestrial form. Finally, Holo means entire, or complete, or whole. So holo metabolous development has a complete change between the young and, pre and the adult. The young in this type of development are termed larvae. 
So they look very, very different from the final adult form or from the final adult stage. So in this life cycle, the insect passes through the egg, the larvae, the pupae, and the adult stages. Now, the larvae tend to look like maggots or caterpillars or worms or something of that nature. Very, very different. Often have uh, weird looking legs and different mouth parts and all manner of crazy things going on. They tend to live in the same basic habitats as the adults, but they probably eat different food. So in the case of this butterfly right here, the larvae is this caterpillar. Caterpillars eat leaves. They have, uh, they have those chewing mouth parts. Uh, and the adults live in that same plant area, but they feed on nectar. So they've got siphoning mouth parts. So they look very, very different, live in the same habitat, but eat different food. Now, the insects will go through, this holometabolus will go through a number of larval stages that we call larval instars. The number of larval instars depends on the species and can vary from anywhere to from just a few to many, many, many different instars or different stages. In general, the larval stage is the main feeding stage for holometabolous insects. So it goes through all of this, just feeding, 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 feeding. Then it will turn into the adult by way of pupation. So it will pupate and it will do this by changing the outer layer of its integument into a hardened pupal case. So it'll turn its outer integument into a really hard like sleeping bag type of case to a hardened pupal case. Some insects spin an extra casing called a cocoon around the pupal casing for extra protection. You may have heard the term chrysalis, maybe growing up. This is a specific name for the pupa of butterflies. So a chrysalis is specifically for butterflies. Now, this stage is usually immobile. So it might be capable of some limited movement. Uh, it might move away or be able to uh, swim away in the case of mosquitoes who pupate underwater in case of danger. But for the most part, it just sits there. It doesn't eat. It doesn't feed. It doesn't move. And it just breaks its entire body down and rebuilds it into the fully formed adult. So internally, what is happening? The larval organs, all the larval in appendages, everything are broken down. They're digested internally inside that pupil casing and replaced with new adult structures. These new adult structures grow from imogonal discs. Imogonal discs are clus clusters of undifferentiated or embryonic tissue. This tissue can then form into whatever it wants to be or whatever the insect needs it to be. So this uh, undifferentiated tissue will form during embryogenesis inside the egg and it'll just sort of hang out in these little discs in the larval form. Once it breaks down in the pupil casing, that's when it becomes um, active. So the insects will turn that undifferentiated tissue, these discs, into differentiated tissues in the adult form. So then the insect is going to rebuild its entire body into this fully formed adult, and the insect is going to emerge or eclose from this pupil stage or this pupil case uh, into a fully formed adult in the big world. It does this by splitting open the pupil case along a weak margin in that case. So there's this area of weakness, like a fold in the pupil casing that the um, insect can exploit. The location of this weakness naturally depends on species, but it tends to be anterior and dorsal, so along the back and along that front portion. Once the insect it closes from the pupa, it'll burst open that um, wee area of weakness, and it's going to look substantially different from the larval stage. So those insects that exhibit hol holometabolous metamorphosis are things like butterflies and moths or beetles or flies, uh, bees, ants, wasps, fleas. So a lot of different insects look significantly different in the larval stage than they do in the adult stage.
Now, I'm going to take a little bit of time to go through the ticks very, very briefly. Remember that ticks are not insects. They're Akari, right? Different class. They have a life cycle that mimics some of the insects, though, and we want to look at it now so that when I get to ticks and when you start looking at ticks in lab, which is going to be pretty soon, you can understand these different uh, stages that they're going through. So most ticks go through four life stages. They start out as, the, as eggs. They're laid in the environment. Then they hatch out of their eggs into six-legged larvae. Those larvae will feed. They will molt into eight-legged nymphs. And then those nymphs will molt into the fully formed adult. So it goes egg, larvae, nymph, adult. After hatching, uh, the ticks need to have a blood meal at every single stage to survive. So the larvae, the nymphs, and the adults all have to feed on some sort of blood. Mm -mm. Ticks that require many, many hosts can take a long time to develop because of this. So uh, some ticks can take up to three years to complete their entire life cycle. Uh, some will just take a few months. It just depends on what they're looking for. If ticks don't find a new host after they molt, they're going to die. So they need that blood meal in order to survive. Now, depending on the type of tick, and we'll talk about this when we get to ticks, the females will lay their eggs either on the ground or in a potential host nest. The larvae are going to hatch. They're going to find a host. They're going to molt either on or off that host. And then they're going to continue on their life cycle. They're going to feed. They're going to molt again. Some ticks are going to spend their entire life on a single host. They're going to get like on a deer and just live there. Other ticks are going to drop off the host, go into the environment, molt in the environment, and then have to find a new host uh, for, for a new blood meal. All right, so that is the basics of all these different types of life cycles. Let me know if you have any questions.